Six Solid Tips on How to Succeed in Learning English. Tip number one Learn daily. Getting daily English input and producing output is important. Since you're not a native speaker, you must exercise this learned skill every day. Otherwise, much like physical fitness, you'll lose it if you don't use it. Consistency is key. It not only will help you achieve fluency quicker, but also help you maintain what you know so it doesn't get lost due to inactivity. So learn every day. If you spent 30 minutes per day for a year, that's 11,000 minutes of learning, or 182 hours. 182 hours! That's a lot. And what if you doubled that? And if you think one hour a day is difficult, I'm including all those few minutes you have during the day. A few minutes here, a few minutes there. You could be listening to a podcast or YouTube video while you're commuting, another 15 minutes while preparing dinner, another 30 minutes watching English content during a meal, and there's your hour. You see how quickly it adds up? And if you make it a point to consume content you love, you'll not only reach 30 minutes to an hour easily, but you'll easily exceed it. And if you feel lazy or unmotivated, here's a trick. Tell yourself you'll just watch or listen for two minutes. Once you start, it'll be so much easier to continue because you already have momentum behind you to keep you going. This always works for me. Try it. Keep it up and let momentum drive your success day after day. Before we move on to the next tip, I want to welcome you all to Smart and Easy English. If you want to speak English natively and naturally, You're in the right place. You found your channel, so be sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks. Okay, now on to tip number two. Pay close attention to accent and pronunciation right from the start. Start working on phonetics from the beginning and do massive amounts of listening in order to get the melody, the intonation of the language. Choose a specific accent you like. If you can't tell the difference between an American, British or Australian accent, for example, choose based on the culture of the country that you most identify with. Which is more you? Which do you think is the coolest? If you think the British royal family is cool, then perhaps the British accent is for you. If you love watching American TV shows, perhaps the American accent is for you. Anyway, you get the idea. Choose one and be consistent in consuming content by speakers with that accent. And be discriminating. Yes, I said be discriminating. Which means, for example, if you want the American accent, don't learn from a British teacher. Don't watch British TV shows. Don't follow British people on social media. If you want to sound American, create an American world for yourself. Before you follow people on social media, do a little digging to see where they're from to make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right kind of English, meaning the English accent you've chosen and that you're going to stick with. Tip number three watch a lot of TV, movies, and YouTube. It's an interesting phenomenon. I've spoken with a lot of English learners. Some have told me they learned it just by watching TV or movies. I've noticed one consistent thing. The ones who learned English from TV or movies usually speak English better, more natural and native, with the right intonation and emotion. They use vocabulary and idioms more contextually appropriate than the traditional learner. You see, language is life. If you only learn from books and traditional instruction, Your English will always be two dimensional and you'll never sound native or natural. Movies and TV shows, on the other hand, portray life, people, and people living life. In media, you see English as a living, breathing thing, not just words on a page. Plus, it gives you invaluable access to culture and mindset. As soon as your English reaches a decent level, I recommend you pick a TV show or movie that's going to be your show or movie for the week or month. You watch it over and over, never just once or twice. 
The learning occurs from repetition. So knowing that, choose content you love and wouldn't mind watching 10, 20, 30 times. Take note of any words or phrases you don't understand. Pause, stop, rewatch. Depending on your level of English, activate subtitles in your native language for the first viewing so you know fully what's going on. In future viewings, activate English subtitles. And further down the road, try not even turning on subtitles. Tip number four, keep track of your progress. Every day, take 15 seconds to one minute and record yourself saying something in English. It doesn't matter what you say. Really, it doesn't. The point of this exercise is for you to be able to go back three months one day in the future and hear your progress. In your audio journal, you can talk about what difficulties or successes you experienced in English that day. Trust me, you'll be glad you did this because you'll listen to this recording a year later and think, wow, pronouncing the word brewery was so difficult. Uh, but now I have no problem. Other things you can record in your audio journal are vocabulary that you encountered, idioms you've heard but don't yet understand and things like that. The point is, just speak for at least 15 seconds in your audio recording every single day so you can circle back and see the progress. Tip number five, eventually stop studying English and start living it. In the beginning, sure, study some grammar, but once your English gets to a certain point, I'd say intermediate level, you must minimize your time studying the language and maximize your time using it. Use English with which to learn and do things you enjoy. Use English to discover and partake in life. When you use the language you've learned to learn something else you enjoy, you'll not only become a more well-rounded person, but you'll also improve your English and by leaps and bounds because you've broken out of the confines of the English book and started to live the language by not studying grammar anymore at this point. I promise your grammar will actually become better. Encountering grammar in context in the wild will make it so much easier to ultimately understand it. You'll eventually find yourself using vocabulary in contextually appropriate ways. You'll use idioms correctly, and you'll naturally use the right verb tense, not because you memorized a rule or even know what it's called, but because how else would you say it? It's all you've heard in your English living journey. Tip number six, have contact with educated native speakers and tutors. So here's the plan. You're going to make native speaker friends digitally if there aren't any native speakers around you. And you will operate this friendship as you would any other. What I'm trying to say is this native speaker is first and foremost your friend, a genuine friend. You bond over life and things. You have natural conversations stemming from common interests. Do not let the basis of your friendship be English language acquisition. It won't work. And certainly, don't constantly be asking your native speaker friends questions about your English, like how you're speaking, is your grammar correct, etc. Not only is it burdensome on your friend, but also because that person is your friend, not your tutor. With your friend, you're going to engage in natural conversations, and you're going to take note of any input that you don't understand. For example, phrases, vocabulary, idioms, etc. You're going to take that back to your native speaker tutor, and it's your native speaker tutor who's going to resolve any ambiguities for you. So yes, I advise you to hire a tutor, even if it's once a month or once every couple months. Consider it money well spent for an English checkup. The analogy would be your native speaker friend gives you all the ingredients and you take it back to your native speaker tutor who's going to show you how to make an amazing meal out of it. If you expect your native speaker friend to also be your tutor, I don't think your friendship will last very long because I probably don't need to say the obvious, but I will. It's just too burdensome. 
So those are your six solid tips on how to succeed learning English. Thank you for watching.